It's so good to be here. I have been dreaming of this moment for a few years now. I came to West Bend. We had just moved to um, Ontario from New York and uh, back to Ontario for me. But for my husband, it was uh, moving to Ontario for the first time. And he was playing here with Heather Bambrick. And so I said, you're playing in a gorgeous barn in the country. We're coming along. And so we all piled into the car, drove up here. It just got increasingly magical as we wound our way to West Bend. And I fell in love with the space, with the surroundings, with Brian and Donna. And after he was done playing, I said, how do I get a gig here? <laughs> how do we do that? And lo and behold, here we are a few years later. Yes. So we're just thrilled. Um, but we are, now that we're here enjoying Campbellford, we're going to go back down to New York City, OK? Um, the first song uh, was inspired by a time when my husband and, and I and our five-year-old son were in between New York and Toronto, back and forth a lot. And I was writing music for a new record. And so a few of the songs um, you know, were inspired by that city that never sleeps. And it really is the city that never sleeps. And so I called this song, We Go.
Thank you, that's Paco Luviano on the bass. My husband, Ben Whippin, on the drums. All right. Thank you. We're going to stay in New York City for one more tune, OK? Um, this one I wrote when I was walking to an appointment with my acupuncturist. I was in Brooklyn, and you know how every city, city just has a rhythm, right? Especially New York. And I'm walking, bopping along, walking along, and I just start hearing this line. Hey, now, what do you say? What do you say? I was like, oh, that's pretty catchy. So I pulled out my trusty iPhone, the voice memo section, and I just recorded it. And then months later, I kind of cracked it open again and wrote this song, which is a tribute to our old neighborhood in Prospect Heights, Brooklyn. Now, who here has been to Brooklyn? New York, that is, not Ontario. <laughs> what do you think? It's good, right? Thumbs up? We love it, and we missed it like crazy when we first moved back north of the 49th parallel. But um, yeah, it's just, you know, we really discovered an incredible community while we were there. Um, and our neighborhood was really changing uh, in the course of the five years that we lived um, on Lincoln Place, it was called. By the way, my name is still on the directory. We were there not too long ago, and my name was still there, apartment 1B. <laughs> and um, so we're watching the neighborhood change. Uh, and some of it is good, some of it is not so good. Um, and the not so good part was that they were kicking people out of their homes, you know, long time residents, trying to change over, uh, you know, get new people in and raise, raise the rent. You know, it's the same old story. So I wrote this song for them, our neighbors, our loved ones in, in Brooklyn and in Prospect Heights, and it's called Got to Love. Born in Brooklyn in 49, lived on Lincoln all this time. gonna ever take the bait hey now what do you say what do you say to love the other hey now what do you say what do you say respect your sister hey now hey now hey now she's gonna be gotta love gotta love gotta love gotta love gotta love gotta love, gotta love. Paco 
Viviano on the bass. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. This is Paco's first gig with us. Can you believe it? Now they're all gonna be scrutinizing you, Paco. <laughs> no, he is pure magic. Um, we met Paco and his dear wife, Hannah, a few years ago, just fellow musicians in the city, and now they live part-time in, in Prince Edward County, which is just awesome. Um, so very grateful to have Paco with us tonight. Uh, we're going to continue now with a song that was inspired by a place very much like this. Um, I was a pretty new mom. Our son is now 11. He's running around here somewhere. I think he's talking to the horses and the donkey. Uh, <laughs> his name is Josh. If you see him, I think he's pounding a Diet Coke. Thank God it's diet. Um, in, or caffeine-free, I should say, not diet. Caffeine-free, that's the important part. Um, so new mom, uh, trying to make it work, you know, two musicians and a, a teeny tiny little baby in the mix. And uh, I had performed in Niagara-on-the-Lake. We were still living in Brooklyn. And um, at this time, we were like, you know what? Trying to drag Josh all over creation with us um, and performing together is not working. So we said, let's, let's separate, <laughs> like, let's each do our own thing on the road and we'll, we'll swap places and that way Josh can be home and have some semblance of stability. Um, and so there I was in Niagara and it was a perfect August night and the show was beautiful and I was driving back to where I was staying after the gig and, and it was just a beautiful moment, kind of that post-show bliss. The windows were cracked open and you could hear the crickets and the radio was on, and I was just loving it. But it was bittersweet because the two people in the world I would want to share that moment with most were at home in Brooklyn, and it was too late to give them even a phone call for some point of contact. So this song came to mind, and it's the idea that, you know, we can sort of beam people <laughs> into our presence by virtue of our imagination. And uh, I think a lot of us have been doing that over the course of the past year and a half, haven't we? Um, so this is called Satellite. Wine above my head 
clouds away A distant scene So I will chase a riot's dream And I will bottle up those crickets and tour with them around the world because that's just like the perfect sound oh I love it <laughs> here's something you'll recognize
Joni, where do you go from there, right? <laughs> I'm just going to be covering Joni Mitchell for the rest of the night now. I do want to release a Joni record at some point. It's just, it's so overdone, but can it be overdone? I mean, it's Joni Mitchell, right? Oh, gosh. Um, we're going we're gonna to do something kind of fun and silly for you now. Is that all right? This is a song about sugar addiction. Can I get an Amen. Anybody out there? Hallelujah! Sugar! <laughs> so I have tried, my, my friend Hannah knows this, I mean, I've tried, I have all sorts of bizarre food intolerances. Sugar is one of those foods, food groups, food groups, <laughs> that I can, I just, you know, my, my doctors, naturopaths, they just say, get off it, and I'm like, well, then I can have tons of maple syrup, right, and honey, and anyway. I cannot get enough, but one new year, because that's the time to do it, right? The resolutions. I joined a kick sugar support group <laughs> on Facebook, and uh, I lasted like four days, maybe, which was impressive for me, I'll have you know. Um, but I stayed in the, it was a 40-day fast. <laughs> So what's, what's the math on that? Don't even tell me. But I, I, I stayed in the group because I was like, well, I'm in the group. <laughs> so I kept following the posts. And one day, uh, there was this woman by the name of Rebecca Reynolds. She's a writer. And she posted a poem in the group. And it was like this ode to sugar. And it was all about like her love of sugar and what it meant to her over the years, the good, the bad, the beautiful, the ugly. And I was like, just wrapped over my bowl of ice cream. And so, uh, so I decided, you know what? I need to write a song about sugar. And so I did. 
and it's kind of saucy. And uh, I just called it very simply sugar. And there's a little sugar rush at the end, okay? So consider yourselves warned. Because I'm uninspired Sugar, because I work so fast Sugar so sweet, it's gonna help me last Because I feel so bad Sugar, because you just approve Sugar so sweet, it's gonna help me Sugar, because I'm lonely still Sugar, cause there's a hole to fill Sugar, because I don't got much Sugar so sweet, it's like a human touch So sweet, it's gonna help me Sugar, because you comfort me Sugar, you know you set me free Sugar, when I can feel the lack Sugar, so sweet when you don't look Have you had your dessert yet tonight? <laughs> All right, so from the ridiculous to the sublime, I hope. Um, <laughs> this next song is uh, really at the heart of the new album, Out of Dust. And little did I know when I wrote the songs and titled the album 
that it would be released at the outset of a global pandemic. And I figured, you know what, aptly named, let's, let's just go with it. And um, a lot of the songs are about this movement from, from darkness into the light. I know that's such a cliche, but that's really, that really was the process for me on almost each song. And, and this one uh, is written for a late friend, uh, one of my dearest friends. She was several decades older than I, but you know, she kind of took me under her wing and, uh, and just poured in. Um, but then also I got to know so much about her and we just enjoyed life together. And um, I had the great privilege of being at her bedside when she passed on. Um, and her name was Wendy. She grew up on a farm. And I think that's one of the reasons that I loved her. She was so hearty and grounded. And, and then she moved to the big city and, uh, and very much became this cosmopolitan and very, you know, a woman of the city. She was equally, equally kind of a woman of the land and a woman of the city. And I loved how those two things intersected in her and made her uniquely special and gave her this just so much wisdom. Um, and so this song tells her story as I knew it. And uh, it's called Simply Wendy's Song. She was born in southern Ontario A daughter of the land And even though it was mid-January She held a sunflower in each hand Oh, her days were filled with harmony And the hymns a mother played There was reverence in that farmhouse A firm foundation had been laid And the fields roll on like galaxies The starry And in this bright lit history, a life is found. And the seasons spin like pinwheels, they cycle around year after year. So many stories. Is worth the telling, and the dreams that brought her here, and the fields turn into city streets, the skies papers their crown, and in this bright. Streets, the fear. 
Thank you very much. And you know what's so special is it just sort of feels like she's right there with us whenever we perform that one live. Um, here's a song I wrote for a family member, Ben's cousin, actually. Her name is Gwyneth Leach, and she is a painter living in New York City. Now, if you think it's hard to be a musician in New York City, and it is, <laughs> imagine what it would like, be like to be a visual artist. Not easy, right? Um, but Gwyneth is like the most dedicated, steadfast artist I think I've ever met. Ben would agree. And in the time that we were there, um, we just saw how faithful she was in her practice, right? You hear it said, whether it's a fitness class or whatever it may be, the hardest part is showing up, right? And that's what she would do. She would show up every day. She'd go to her studio, which was separate from her home, and uh, she would go pick up her coffee, her morning coffee from the Empire Cafe. And uh, she describes that the hardest part was always like crossing the threshold into her studio, like when she was fumbling for her keys and putting them in the, you know, in the knob. And like, then she would enter the space and it was like the tension would just break. But she had a really tough year in 2015. She lost her sister, her only sister. And, and so, um, she started experiencing artist's block and didn't want to go to her studio. But she pushed past it and kept going faithfully. And then one day, as if to add insult to injury, she hears all this noise. She was on the 13th floor. Yes, there are buildings that have 13 floors. <laughs> and she was on the 13th floor and she peers out and she sees that they are breaking ground below. Oh boy, so a, a brand new building is gonna go up right in front of her, right? And so she's really mad, like, come on. But she keeps showing up. And as the building gets higher and higher and higher, and it's eventually eye level with her, everything she's watching turns into like visual theater. And she takes a canvas and she begins to paint it. And she fills canvas after canvas with construction paintings, right? And now she is known and gets commissioned to do construction drawings by huge corporations in New York City. Isn't that something? I mean, scaffolding and cranes and all these things that just to us would be eyesores as passersby, right? But she makes them beautiful. And it became this incredible journey of healing for her. Um, and so I thought, oh, I gotta write a song about that. Um, and there's actually a mini documentary. It's called The Monolith. Um, and you can find it if you Google Gwyneth Leach, The Monolith. And it's so good. Um, and so this is my version of The Monolith. Walks down the avenue with the daybreak of light. Thoughts awake the early muse, and her canvas is white. Dreams of mining come from 
the Empire Cafe. Doubt is rising up. She goes on her way. Pushes open double doors. The doorman says hello. She has won through tears Steps into the space that's held her all these years And then she disappears is out her window now on the scenes below workers wearing orange vests they're like dots of neon glow building rises up another story She can't break through Could the tidal wave of stone and steel and crew Be the start of something new Steadfastness, I tell you. Pays off, right? I have another funny story about her. I'll tell you very briefly. I know I'm so long-winded. Um, so she went to her alma mater, um, Penn State, to give a talk. And she was so honored that they invited her. She shows up. 
There's three people in the room, okay, in an auditorium. Three, three. <laughs> and one of them is an, uh, an elderly gentleman falling asleep in the back. And so anyway, she's like, do I even talk? But she did, you know, because she's Gwyneth and that's what she does. So she gives, you know, this wonderful talk. And then after that, this woman walks up to her and says, I'm the head of merchandising for um, anthropology. We would love to do something with you. And so they put out a Gwyneth Leach coffee cup line. How's that for a story, right? Isn't that extraordinary? Wow. Anyway, remember that on your tough days, right? Think of Gwyneth. <laughs> um, we're going to continue now with something familiar. This is by Neil Young, and it's called Heart of Gold. Ready? One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Jim. 
first time playing that with us ever. <laughs> yeah, Paco. Awesome. I actually, I think I'm going to skip ahead to, uh, I want to face all y'all, as they would say down south. We're going to do something really fun. Uh, this is on my album from Sea to Sky, which was released on CBC Records when CBC Records was a thing. Remember CBC Records? <laughs> uh, now, gosh, over 12 years ago now. Oh, my goodness. And uh, it's a really fun little song by um, Feist. Collection. What? <laughs> <laughs> They're very light. And this is what they use for kids, right? At school when they want to have some fun with music. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. Are you ready? the coats the way the babies haven't been born oh packing the bags and setting up the van in lilacs and buttercups oh in the meantime I got it hard second floor living without a yard maybe it's until the day Dreams are matching with my pain. Thank you. 
you. Ben Whitman on the drums. Paco Luviano on the bass. Thank you so much. All right, we're gonna do a few, a couple more for you. Um, this was a request-o-matic song that uh, came in years ago. So what is the request-o-matic, you ask? The request-o-matic is this game I like to play where I invite listeners like yourselves to submit a song request. And there's no restriction on genre. Now, it's not quite as fun as you think. I wish I was a human jukebox and knew every song in the world and could just respond in real time and whip up an amazing arrangement on the spot requested right in the moment. <laughs> but I need a little bit of notice. And, uh, and then I, I can whip something up pretty quickly, but I usually need at least about an hour. And so this request came in. There's no restriction on genre. And so I've had everything from a song from the musical Rent uh, to Céline Dion to uh, Coldplay, as you're about to hear, Beyonce, Prince, I mean, you name it, I've gotten it. Uh, and so this is what we did with Cold Plays Yellow. And uh, the first line is usually not really applicable, but I feel like tonight, if you just peek outside, you will see the stars. The stars, look how they shine for you, and everything you do. Yeah, they were all yellow. I came along, I wrote a song. the things you do and it was called yellow so then I took my turn oh everything you've done and it was all yellow
Look at the stars Look how they shine for you And all the things you do Ben Whitman. Oh, those crickets. They're the good kind of cricket, you know what I mean? There's the crickets you hear when there's no one else around. <laughs> but these are just, they're so wonderful. Um, I'm going to play two more for you, if that's all right. Um, and uh, before we go into the last two songs, I want to thank... Firstly, all of you for coming out and supporting live music in these strange times. You give us life when you come out and show up like this. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And, oh my goodness, Brian and Donna, I mean, come on. Their story is just so beguiling and it's sort of fairy tale like in that they built, they created their own fairy tale and in so doing invited us all into the fairy tale, am I right? So thank you, Brian and Donna. And as you might expect, they've surrounded themselves with amazing people and I'm afraid I'm gonna miss somebody but the wonderful Sam who helps with all kinds of social media and promotion. Uh, Dave, who is handling the tech side of things. Andy is on sound. Sebastian was helping. Rebecca was handling logistics. Catherine fed us. And the list goes on. So thank you so much, West Bend family. And um, I do have CDs available tonight. I'm going to put on my mask and my hand sanitizer and all that stuff. And I think I'm supposed to go over there. Um, just across here, you'll see, you'll see me. You'll see the humid, <laughs> the hair that's been ruined by the humidity. Um, so do come say hello. Um, but otherwise, just a just a heartfelt thank you for joining us tonight. And we're here again tomorrow night. And so if you have friends who you think might enjoy the show, send them our way. I'm pretty sure there are a few tickets left. Um, and then of course I want to acknowledge this incredible band playing with us for the first time, Paco Luviano on bass. And that's my husband and partner in all things. I love him. That's Ben Whitman on the drums. All right. Uh, I'm going to play a solo ballad. I co-wrote this song with Mark Jordan. Um, and uh, he's great. We did it over email. Does that take the romance out of it? <laughs> was a product of the 21st century in every sense of the word. So um, this is called Still the One. There's a car at the stage door Remember your thoughts and it all 
tumbles out You're still the one I can't do without So bring on the clowns And the painted backgrounds The lavender blue skies And the reasons why Cause you're still the one that I dream So I rolled up the moon and I packed up the tents. The acrobats wait and they jump the fence. If I can have you, then I'll do without. Cause you're still. Cause I know it was made for the beautiful light that shines down throughout. And you're still the one that I think about. You're still the one that I dream. Thank you. Here's another request, Tomatic. I hope you're thinking about what song you might request the next time. Just need a little bit of notice. <laughs> seats. Let's dance. Put on your red shoes and dance the blues. Let's dance to the song they're playing on the radio. And 
Don't worry, Brian, I won't do anything bad. I promise. Not true. Oh, no, it is 